Cette chanson est dédiée pour les amis de mon...
And for our English speaking friends, there are some spare seats here in the front. Thank you. Yakatatuka, <laughs> No te tai a koro anga mata e popinga no mata no te iti tangata i rarotonga nei. Te o aka aere. Te o kumiti te iki ia. Te o mata tatiki tai te i piri mai i ki roto i tia uipa anga i roto i tia i ai nei. Te pati nei mata i te vairua tapu no o ke puaka pa mai i ki roto pu ia mata o. Ke arataki ki a tūrama e ki a akatina mau i te ngakau o kotai e metaki e to mato i tangata e metaki e mato i roto i tira e no te ora te ka eri e mato ki mua ki ora mato i ako e Amen Metaki mata For those who just come in there's plenty of seats at the front here please But let me first now formally open this first public meeting in Wakati Awotonga uh, of the Cook Islands Parliamentary Totato Wai Authority Bill Select Committee. This is a formal meeting similar to any sitting of Parliament, which means there, uh, there is a Hansard recording of all speakers tonight. So this basically means that everyone who speaks will be recorded and these will be transcribed as official document of the outcomes of tonight's meeting. So in saying that, I'm very humbled to see you all tonight and warmly welcome any contributions that you may have to assist the committee with its review and findings with the Totato Vai Bill. All recommendations from tonight will be collected, deliberated on and considered by the committee before submitting to Parliament. 
So having said that, uh, for the record of our transcriptions, uh, my name is Mark Brown. I am the Member of Parliament for Takawaini Tutaki Moa Te Otue Parikura. And I am the Chair of the Cook Islands Parliamentary Tutato Vai Authority Select Committee. And I'll be chairing the meeting here tonight. I'd like to introduce the members of the Select Committee here tonight. On my right is the Deputy Chair of the Select Committee, the Honourable Selina Napa, a Member of Parliament for Titikavaka. Also, we have the Honourable Tiripa Imawate on the far right, the Member of Parliament for Amuri Uriia, Yenaichutaki, the Honourable Tehani Brown, Member of Parliament for Tengatangi Areora Ngati Arua, Yenachu, the Honourable Albert Nicholas on my left, Member of Parliament for Ruotonga Abachu, Palmerston Atupa, and the Honourable Patrick Arioka, Member of Parliament for Muri Inua. Our officials with us this evening, Oh, sorry, and also <laughs> Agnes Armstrong, the Honourable Member for Ibirua in Mangaia. And our officials with us this evening to assist the committee with our review and consultation on the bill are the Totato Vei Limited officials, Mr. Gregory Longman, who is the Chief Executive, uh, we have the Chairman of the Board of Totato Vai, Mr. Brian Mason, and we have Mr. Sam Napa Senior, a Board Member of the Totato Vai Board, and Mr. Walter Torai White, who is uh, an employee of Totato Vai. We have our Parliamentary Secretariat that is with us here, the Acting Clerk of Parliament, Janine Daniel. Uh, Margaret Numanga, who is the Committee Secretary for Totato Vei Authority Select Committee. Uh, and we also have with us the Hansard Unit of Parliament, Tai Manavaroa, the Editor of Debates, Janet Brown, the Hansard Recorder, and Unuia Unuia, our Technician. And finally, Tino Puna, who is our translator for tonight's consultations, should the need arise. And lastly, I'd like to acknowledge and welcome the presence of the Speaker of the House, the Honourable Nikki Rattle, who is with us also. Uh, alongside the team tonight, there are also, uh, from Temaraiora, the Director of Public Health, Dr. Uka, and also the Solicitor General from the Crown Law Office, uh, Stuart Baker, who is with us. To begin and to assist the Hansard with the recording, uh, I would like to ask that any speaker or each speaker clearly state for the record your full name, uh, your title of the land and the catchment area that you are in, uh, or if you are an organization you are representing, and if you are representing as an individual. And also state for the record uh, your village and vaka. There will be these three microphones here, as you can see. Uh, so anyone who wishes to speak, please indicate to do so and move to the nearest microphone that you can see the three of them here in the room. Uh, we ask so that we can keep some order that you request uh, approval from the chair before first speaking. This is also to assist with our records keeping by the hand side. Uh, before I open the floor to anyone, may I just briefly say that the Parliamentary Todato Vei Authority Select Committee was formally established by the Parliament on the 8th of July to review the Todato Vei Authority Bill and report back to Parliament on the 30th of September 2020. Is it the 30th? Or to Parliament on the 30th of September, yes. Expressions of interest for your submissions on your views to the Totato Vei Authority Bill have been advertised and announced on the radio and over the last few weeks. We wish to advise and encourage members of the public to download an e-copy of the bill and the explanatory notes on the Parliament website or the Parliament Facebook page or collect a copy from the Totato Vei Limited Office 
in uh, Takawainu and submit your submissions to the committee secretary, Margaret Numanga, or simply call her at Parliament for guidance and advice. Uh, as you can see, we have a tight schedule and already we have received submissions and requests for presentations from various organizations and groups. The closing date for submissions on the Totato Vai bill will be on Friday the 11th of September 2020. So we've given uh, the whole of uh, August and also into the first two weeks of September for people wishing to make submissions. 11th of September, yeah. I will now quickly run over the remaining of tonight's proceedings. Firstly, I will invite the Totato Way Limited officials, Mr. Brian Mason, the chairman of the board, Papa Sam Napa, board member, and Greg Longman, the chief executive, uh, along with Walter Tuarai White, he's the customer services officer of Totato Way, to begin with the PowerPoint presentation. Now their presentation will be broken down into parts, so this will allow for questions to be asked or clarified, uh, and at which point I will open the floor to invite speakers. Uh, so there are eight parts in this bill. At the end of each part, we will open the floor to anybody who would like to comment or ask questions about certain parts of the bill. Uh, I'd like to ask that we wait until they finish their parts of the presentation before we get into the questions and clarifications. Secondly, please indicate to the chair uh, and we will make available for you one of these three microphones for you to speak into. And thirdly, again, a reminder, those who do wish to speak, to state clearly for the record your full name, title and organization you are representing uh, and if you are representing as an individual. And also to state for the record, uh, the village in Vaka, uh, before you put forward your views or your questions. Okay. At this point, I will now hand over to our gentleman to begin their presentation. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kia ora, everybody. My name is Walter Tuare White, and I um, work in our customer services area. Uh, tonight's proceedings will start with um, Sam Napa. He will give us a brief history of Rarotonga's um, uh, water supply um, right from the beginning to this uh, very present day. And then we'll move on to other elements of the bill, which we'll um, discuss throughout this evening. Uh, firstly, thank you for coming tonight, so we actually may um, have a chat about this bill. O tokoto ranga itire te me ko mato o te GHT te te me te 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 design o te water system ko ne ko te tai te designers doctoru mato. Hey hey. So inori inori le te a pony to background I'm an agriculture agriculture engineering yeah I don't know that I'm in Jenny Mas University. So, no longer did it to run Marmitakuria. Your Tony, Matakaway, Mani, not Otter, it took Puru, it's all part of the system, no matter mine. Now, Erotodi, Marmo Mangaconi, Mokate, Tatogiri, Rataki to Itado, Taranoi and Tatu Tango, to Tango to Tatu Passe. We Tatoe to Matasi, eighteen twenty three, Tamete Vangiria Cone, eighteen twenty eight, two eighty eight, Atra eighty eight, and a yeah, housing site is oil. The oil is oil. It's 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 oil.
I would like to give a, a brief history of the water here in Norotoma. Uh, as you may be aware that in 1823 the gospel arrived here to the Cook Islands and then a couple of years later there was an establishment of where people should live in villages. Now, in Rungu Kiti, Tata Ara Rungu Ko, the Matei 1845, Aka Nuo Ia Te Kao Mani Mua Ko Ia Kiti Ui Ia Riki. In 1845, the, the uh, first government was formed. Now, Ara Mei Tata Ure, the Matei 1899, Aka Mana Ita Ture Kura Ngai Te Au Empowering Act. Te Ire Ra Kao Ui Anga, no Te Mea, E Ture Te E Tanga Ngai Te Iti Tanga Te Ngo Te Enua. And in 1899, there was an authority called the O. It contains of all the Hariki. This is to bring the people together so that they can live in peace. Now, in 1907, in there were some other laws that was created. It, it is the, um, the water supply, the road ordinance, the ordinance, the building ordinance, the road 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 the road reserve. And in that ordinance, it allows for, for roading to be established with a width of 10 meters. Now, in 1907, the water ordinance, the water rates stay. In, in 1907, the water ordinance was established and, e and e it was during that time when the water system was established. Now, in 1915 Act. And we all know that in 1915 the Cook Islands Act was established. Now, in 1917 And in 1917 anything that takes place on the land must be, um, the landowner's permission must be seen. And you may be, you may not be aware that those who are involved with the establishment of water are the leaders and landowners of the land where they will fetch the water. So at Mataiji, 1952, the amendment in the And in 1952, there was an amendment made, especially for those people who will waste water. And there is allowance given for, for planters to use water from 5 to 7 in the morning. <laughs> Six. Six. Six in the morning. Yes. Okay. Now, in 1960, the Rarotonga Water Works Ordinance. So, when we come to 1960, the Rarotonga Works Ordinance was established. A rural rates of the way, a tight domestic rate, a tight commercial rate. You will see that there are two types of rates: one for the domestic water rates, and the second one is for commercial water rates. Okay, I'm going to do it in 1964. I'm going to try to the two day resident commissioner, Mona Emma, the Queen's Rep. And in 1964, there was an amendment made. It's a substitution of the resident commissioner to the Queen's representative. The mm -hmm. 1972 amendment the water rate And in 1972 there was an amendment made, and that amendment was created to uh, to cancel or to repeal the domestic water rate. commercial rate but the commercial rate still remain. Sad to see no one ever paid for that. 
Let's come back to the water cycle. Okay. Here in, in Rarotonga, there are three ways that we use water. The first one is rain water. Okay, the way and surface water. And the water that runs through our stream, that's a surface water. Okay, Service water. Let's have a look at the explanation for the service water. Okay, the way the service water is going to be the way that the water is going to be the way that water As you will see from the pictures showing that the surface water runs from the mountain through creeks and to the bottom where we see the streams. Okay. Now, now we will look at the water zones. There are 12 uh, water pipes that was established for us here. So these are the water uh, zones that was established by government in, in those uh, districts and that has been established by government today. Okay. This has been established by government so that in times of drought we still have water to supply our needs. So that's, that's, that's a true picture of Havana. When there is a lot of water, there is an overflowing of water, but uh, when there's drought, there's hardly any water in the in the holding. So, okay. Tete itu angada tu dia kau ni orang orang kita way inua. Karena kita way inua the ground water. And there is another type of uh, water collection that's ground water and underground uh, infiltration. Tete itu awak nak ay tak way ni awak tu and Papua. Ya kau pernah ay tu no patu angan. Nane ramu itu way me tete temboro cerita roh itu ngai kau yaman. There are four um, underwater, uh, underground infiltration that Samana Takaway never to in Papua. So, from, uh, from now, we will look at how our government have established our water reticulation for Rarotonga. When you look at this PowerPoint, you will notice that there are six stages and nearly every stage it takes a year for government to implement it. And uh, stage seven, so you will notice from stage seven that was done in 2005 and six and continues up to the to the development of the of town area. Now we will look at uh, stage 12, the establishment of the Matawai. So the Tuamua, which is stage one now, what the Nati Chinto Jiria, Eru Ring Main Taeuta Etai Itai. And during that time, it, it was under the, it was funded by the Chinese government, the establishment of two ring mains on the island of Rortonga. So I made the stage two, no longer the trunk main. And then in stage two, that was the establishment of the trunk main. 
Amelia, no longer with the Tayoko, with the water treatment. And finally, it's, uh, it leads us into the water treatment. Okay. Now, I got to do the thing I eat it every day. What tea? I got to do the thing I eat it every day. What tea? I got to do the When you look at the PowerPoint, you will see the, the picture showing the old. And, and when you go follow down, you will see the, the, the development, which is called the Matawai Project. At this stage, um, we haven't gone through it because we have some problems with it. Uh, Brian Mason, Chair TTV. Um, in uh, late 2017, I was approached to form a company, Tatata Bay Limited, wholly owned by the Investment Corporation, uh, because there was the concern that the Tamato Bay project might be finished and there was no company to manage, to manage it upon its completion. Just to emphasise, uh, Tamato Bay and uh, Tatata Bay are two quite separate organisations. One is responsible for building and uh, commissioning the infrastructure of the project. Our job is to take o it over whatever we're given and manage it thereafter, including the um, supply for domestic consumers and the ring main. The intention has always been... Just a minute, just a minute, Brian. Give me time, please. Okay. Well, well the lawyer, the Igia Mai, the Kaumani, the Tuo, the Kirutu, the Tia, no te akatina mou anga i tō tātou wai. Nā rā, kāre i... Kāre eo matāra i rau kāki i tēri ratuātou e kākapē i te akatina mou anga i tēri ira. Ko pati e mai re rāo re re, kēra mai eo ke te ate mamo i te uanga anga. No te akatina mou anga i te ture e te akatina mou anga i teta i kōpupa, kēra mai rāo aki i te ture. Ok, Brian. It is important that Te Tātou Whai become a statutory corporation so that it is properly accountable to the public. And it has the same checks and balances as all the other statutory corporations. I did a tour to you to a territory and Kopopa, made it a Kopopa care to make a Ponga Wira, a Ports Authority at the airport. So, Greg Longman, a CE of Tatato Vai. Excuse me. Um, on the slide, you'll see the island of Rawatonga. And we're represented by in the writing of a ten intakes. Me agarapoto i te tutu no rarotonga e te tai o kairo e re te takapini i tatau e mua ka marama tu ai. Tatata vai intend to be able to service um, uh, from means high, sorry, mean high sea level to an elevation of 30 meters above that level. As you can see on the PowerPoint, the blue line represents a contour of that 30 meter elevation above that. It encompasses the majority of the dwellings on the island. The elevation was selected to ensure a serviceable pressure at the points of use. When we look at this allocation, 
you will notice that the red, the area marked red, is the water that comes from Mavana. It covers nearly a whole lot of uh, area in Natangia and then the beach side on the uh, on the Titikavaka and the Arwang area. And the green area, it's, um, that's been uh, sketched and allocated, the water comes from Turangi. You will notice it covers basically the beach side from around Ngatangi uh, Ia, Matavera, down to Avarua, Nikau. And from the purple color that's indicated, it, it, the water comes from Takawaini, it covers the area of town and to up to near Matavera. And you will notice the yellow color near the water from Avatu, it covers basically a Nico area. And for the light blue color that's been um, uh, highlighted, the water comes from Papua. The water comes from uh, Rutaki. and to be self-funded, not make a profit. <laughs> to recognize the importance of landowners in the catchments. Be accountable to the Cook Islands Investment Corporation. <laughs> Uh, investment corporation. authority, establishment and functions. Areas of operation of Authority is limited to activities in Rarotonga only. And our Queen's Rep can add a study at some point in the future. Functions of Tatatovai is to collect, treat, deliver water. Meet any prescribed water standards. Manage the water resource and find new sources of water as required. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering if it might be an uh, opportunity to pause at the moment. Have you gone through the first part? Um, well, just to inform uh, members that the parts coming up uh, deal with landowners and then tariffs, so that doesn't need to be raised now. 
um, but just if anyone has a comment on the history or upon the okay. functions and objectives. The Naroni, the lawyer, a Kia, a Rotupo Tatu, it in a Kiaroma, it is a Kanga, no Rotu, Kiri, my, it is a Yuanga, no longer it is a Tina Moyanga or the Vai, the Margatatu, area two, Kitu, Kitu, or the Tuanga. Thank you, Brian. If you can come to one of the microphones at the front here, please. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Kieran Rule, Brian Bowden, uh, individual from No Roads, Nika. <laughs> um, I have a very simple question for the construction of the Tatata Wai Company, and the question is. Are, sorry. Are there a number of board members to this limited company, and if so, are they paid? the board There are five board members. Member of the board. And after paying the enormous rent to the landlord, thank you. <coughs> they are paid. And how much is that remuneration? How, how much is it? Uh, I'm not sure, but it's $18,000 a year. And it's, it's allocated in the budget. It's divided by five as chair. I get a higher remuneration than the other directors, although I can't remember exactly what it is, but it is determined by the investment corporation, not by ourselves, and it is in uh, exact line with the payments to directors of other statutory corporations. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Te karanga ni ri ra te roi e na te CIC e a tina moe e i a te ra e i a te ra e i a te ra. Okay. We said eighty thousand. Yeah, eighteen budget. Yeah. Um, now, are you going to keep? Yes, Danny. Ah, uh, kia ora. Tani Mataro, Uri Matebo, Fui Guramai, Chikangarera, Tofu, Tianga Tofu, Tewotone, Naked Rep, Akin Motenu, Taharanio, Maria Kiokite, Kairianga Tutu Guni, Eti Kite Angawe, E. Akatika Yanre at Tatu Uchupunogi at Chachi at the way. I stand before you to say that I'm a leader from Arurangi and maybe I will be a landowner. But I am so surprised to see from the PowerPoints that water has been paid before. Um, in order to the video, we are the chair of the board. And I want to ask this question to the chairman of the board. When government may admin the company privatize a that they put on a lie or don't know, manga. If the government privatizes part of 
of um, Etimong. Ah. If, if the government privatizes a, a ministry or a department or an arm of what he, they do, and I've seen things happening in New Zealand and Australia, the Chinese government comes and, and, and bought those, um, those bodies, those corporates. The acronym of the Dotato Way Authority, the Rarok A, the Tamar Murwa, the CIC. And I noticed, CIC, I, and I noticed that Dotato Way will fall under CIC. Ina, Kotoku Tika Anga Atu Inua, Toku Tika Anga, it is not the Maori or the Inua. Haroka Ine Yaku, the Tapu, the CIC, Yate. So my concern is in regards to my interest, my land rights on this land. So can can CICC, uh, CIC go ahead and sell this land? No, no. Can I stop CIC? Can I stop CIC from selling, selling. this land? No, no. Selling to Tato Way. Ah, selling Totato Way to other businesses or bodies. Uh, Brian Mason, Chair TTV. Thanks, Danny. Um, it is true that in some countries the management of water has been privatised with mixed success. But one of the reasons why Tatatu Vai will not be uh, privatised is because the government has taken the view shared in other countries, government, shared by governments of other countries. That water is not a resource that is owned by the government. It is not like electricity which is created by man. Water, Water is the gift of God. And no one should profit from it. And that is why Tato Vai, in its statute, must not make a profit. And no private company is interested in buying an organisation that must not make a profit. Just for everybody's benefit, the land that the water intake sit on does not belong to the government. It belongs to the landowners. So the government has no ability to sell a company that it does not own property on. Thank you, Name and title, yeah. please. Oh. Nolan Tedeki Tawana Brown, T today, um, Ngati Makea. I'm here as Ngati Makea, not um, as any other title that I may have, that I do have. I heard the, the answer um, that the government owns the water. How do you own the water when the water falls onto our land? Up there in the 
Ko te ona te o te wai. No, that's wrong. Uh, yeah, uh, Brian Mason, TTV Chairman, we agree with you 100%. Thank you. Te karangani a ye, ko ye te board o te chairman o te chief to tato wai, arigu a ye ahoi. <laughs> Sorry, what, what did you agree with? <laughs> did you agree that the government owns the water? No, <laughs> I think we need to change lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. It depends whether it's the first part or the second part. The second part, no one owns the water. So no one owns the water. Um, no. Water, water, does, water does not need to be owned, it needs to be managed. And uh, the next slide. Uh, perhaps emphasize. Oh, we've got another question here. Yes. Oh, sorry. Do we have another question there, please? Yeah. Come forward. Kia ora, na. Kia ora na all. That's something that I learned today. Um, I'm actually here in the capacity of the chairman of the growers community, and I can see that there are quite a few of them here tonight. They're concerned that the function of this bill doesn't serve agriculture. Sorry, my name is Diana Chan and I'm from Aitsaki. Um, so I am here on their behalf, on our growers' behalf, to request if you would please grant them an audience separately and a separate consult if the rest of your committee are in agreeance with that. Yes, of course, and, and we look forward to the submissions that will be put by the agriculture community and by other communities, including the tourism community and any other vested interest uh, people. Sorry, can I just add, we have requested to our growers community if they would be happy with us putting a submission in first, because Margaret has told us that that's what we need to do, and they're not satisfied with that. They would rather get clarity from you before we put their submission in on their behalf. <laughs> Submissions date closes on the 11th of September, so yeah. any time before then, your submissions will be welcome, and we will personally make a sitting available to get submissions, receive submissions from a presentation by the growers. What your submissions? I know here that you could make it a couple of days. I might get a thing or matter or tip them. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. Does that mean you're going to have a separate consult for them? Yes, indeed. If they want a separate consultation, we will we will uh, have a separate sitting okay, and will to you listen that? to agriculture submissions. And will you do that, please, prior to the closing of the submissions, so that we can work <laughs> on their submissions, dependent on whether the information you give them and the clarity that you give them. Yes, we will do that. And if you can provide us when a date that you would like to do that, we will endeavour to be available at that date. Thank you. My name is Jackie Tuara, and I stand here as an individual but landowner in the Takawana catchment. Um, my question is, and everyone is a little bothered by the whole having to pay for water, is if we're going to charge for water, does that not add to the cost of living? 
you have everyone has that added cost. I know in the bill it says a, a maximum amount that will not be charged for, but you add that to agriculture where they use a lot of water. You add that to businesses in the tourism industry that use a lot of water. So that gets added to their costs. So the cost to the consumer goes up. So that doesn't really make any sense if we're trying to um, reduce the level or the cost to our people just to live. So I don't really see why we need, why you have to charge. You're already increasing the costs by establishing a committee that you're going to pay $80,000 a year to run. You've got added costs that you're creating because you're creating this. So I guess I need to see and understand better why. Why the added costs to our, life, to our living well, in, in, in every step of the way, not just at the household, but right through the business sector. For everyone uses water. Thank you. So just to clarify, are you asking a question whether we should charge for water or not? I'm saying that is the reason you should not charge for water. You should not increase the cost of our living. Thank you. Um, thank you. The bill, which is quite lengthy, deals with uh, landowners. Tatato Vai differs from all other statutory corporations in that it requires large areas of land to supply it with its product. In most countries, the Crown or the government owns the land where the water is captured. In the, in, on Rarotonga, all land which is essential for capturing water is privately owned. It is very important for the residents on Rarotonga that the water that comes from the catchment is um, um, preserved and the quantities that are needed are maintained. Consequently, the government has asked landowners if they would voluntarily agree through legislation to limit the use of their own land. Generally, the response has been, we will make the sacrifice for the good of the people of Rarotonga. But we will control it, not you. Consequently, it is the, it's the obligation of Tatato Vai to to pay for a meeting of assembled owners of every title in every catchment to point, appoint one representative to a catchment committee and to pay the allowances of that catchment committee which will consider 
activities that people want to undertake in the catchment committee. And Akartara noted Ayo Ananga, Tekara Tupu here, Iruma Itiao Inu, and decide whether it will compromise the water. And Akare Mekato Marirai, the Rupoping Anga or the way. And if the catchment committee decides it will not compromise the water, Mete Mede Akarate Kumiti Kareto one at the Turanga, not the Ormanga by the way, it will approve of that. Uh, activity and it includes Tato to Tato Vai if Tato Vai wants to take un, uh, undertake any activity in the catchment it must have the approval of the catchment committee of landowners it does not deal with the landowners who are below the catchment and on whose land is located the infrastructure such as the sediment tanks so the reason for that is there is no reason to ask landowners to restrict development there those landowners, their concern is what TTV is building on their land and its proper management. And compliance with the Environment Act. So the two groups of landowners have different interests. Uh, that are uh, in good part dealt with in the Infrastructure Act and the Rarotonga Water Ordinance. Yeah. And the rest, of the, <coughs> the rest of the valley, which again have different interests again, uh, dealt with in access agreements which deals with roading and other issues, which is not um, to Tato Vai, it is the Crown generally. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering whether. Yeah. Not only the the tsunami or the catchment. Uh, yeah, Wayne. Yeah. Yes. Can you Wayne. give your name and Wayne Mitchell? <laughs> I'm a landowner, and uh, one of the catchments is uh, where my areas of concern are because I am a landowner there. A triple by Lubin, and I am the last person living in the mountains towards the, uh, that intake. So I see everything every day. Okay. So here we, we are tonight, this evening, we're discussing this bill and it doesn't even cover everything as, it, as you have stated categorically. Right there you say, this note is not part of the bill. Which pretty much to me means I'm kind of like, should I really say anything? Because you said it, you said it right there. But I'll take it in good faith. And I have um, I have a couple of questions. Um, right. Number one. Why um, the overall uh, management structure is that Tōtātou Wai uh, are the managers 
owners, operators of the system. Question is, why is there no representation on that board for landowners? Excuse me, why are, you, are you talking about the catchment committees? No, not the committee. The authority itself. My question, the reason why I ask this question is because you have built your structure on our land. We You've done this with our consent. But you have not given us a say. Uh, you have given us a token offer. By allowing us to sit on committees, which catchment committees, which you have done here. And to my way of thinking, it really gives us no rights at all. Because Tot other way is the ones who make the rules. So that's my question on that one. You can answer that now. Brian, do you want to answer that? Hmm? The, 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 the structure of the board, how it's established? Oh, uh, Brian Mason, Chair Tatada Vai, I'm a completely punches pilot. The determination of the makeup of the board is a matter determined by the Cook Islands Investment Corporation and not the board of TTV. Okay, that's, um, that's, that's pretty clear in that respect. But this is a draft bill. So pretty much you're setting up the structure now. So I'm asking for this to be taken on board, that we have at least one representation, because there is nothing that tells you in any kind of corporation um, authority that's set up, there's nothing to stop you from appointing who you wish. <laughs> My second question, fines imposed and the criminalisation of any offences committed using water. Now, number one, I, I, I've lived in quite a few countries in the world. I've been away for over three decades. So, um, in my time overseas, yes, I have seen people arrested and jailed for misusing water in respect to like maybe poisoning people with water, you are selling contaminated water, all that kind of stuff. That's criminal. That's fair enough. But over here, we don't have people like that. So my question is, why are you making this a criminal offence? To my way of thinking, fines. Fines are fine, but within reason. The fines I see imposed here look to me like a cut and paste job. Maximum fine for an individual, 50 grand. Just let a guess. 
based on these people here. Everybody here. You're looking at, who can afford 50 grand? Not many of us. Maybe you guys up there. None of us here, pretty much. So excuse me, because when you impose a fine like that, which is unreasonable, you're hurting us, and you're hurting us big time. And you will make us criminals. Thank you, Wayne. I think the reference is to criminal activity, and you know, I'll prefer to Brian to explain the difference between that and somebody who has a leak. I think there are um, two points I'd like to make. Um, the first is my colleague, the Chief Executive Gregory Longman, has worked for many years in Kiribati, Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea and he was able to inform the Select Committee that the fines and penalties in the bill are comparative to those other Pacific countries. The second thing is, you do not make murder a fine punishable by $100 because it would be hard on somebody's family if they went to prison. You, imp you, you impose penalties to stop people doing things and the affordability is the very reason that you should raise the fine because if it's too affordable, it encourages people to undertake illegal activity, not to stop it. Thank you. Uh, we have some more with questions. If you have another uh, question there, Wayne. Yes, I do. That's why I said I can ask you all the questions one hit and then you can answer the whole lot. Or I can do it one by one at a time. It's only a um, couple more, one or two. Um, you've, uh, you've answered my, my question um, in, in that respect, but I'm, I do submit to the government that this is too much, but we can move on. Um, <clears throat> this is more like a... Uh, Oh, yeah. The question about the, um, the area around the catchment. Now, you haven't specified how many metres, say, uh, away from any structure, say, the water catchment itself or the water buildings, the, the, the reservoir, whatever. You haven't stated how many metres away. Uh, you haven't defined the area that we can't build in. Because don't forget, this is our land. And by putting that on us as well, you're telling us what to do on our own land. Excuse me, that doesn't sit right with me. So I'd like a bit of clarification on that because I, I, I mean, myself personally, I can accept so many meters, fine, you know. So I'm the the reason reason the question there is because I don't know about the other intakes, but I do know about our intake. We have had agriculture up there for hundreds of years above the water catchment. As well as uh, even though not knowing about the rest of the other catchments, our histories already tell us we do not live on the beaches, we live in the mountains. Thank you, Wayne. In response to the query, then, why? Uh, we haven't determined a number of meters away from certain structures. The boundary of the catchment area is determined by the top of the ridge of the mountain that forms that valley. Because every drop that falls on the valley side of that ridge is in the catchment area. 
If it falls on the top of the other side of that ridge, it's in another valley area, not in this catchment. So what the bill says is the representative, the owners of that catchment area, the land on that catchment areas, which is above the intake, it is their responsibility to approve what activity takes place on their land, not the government. And so if you decide that planting above the intake is okay, that it won't damage the water, then that's fine. If you believe that running a piggery or some other activity is up there, then that is the decision of the majority of the landowners in that catchment area, not the government. Yeah, Brian Mason, Chairman Tatatafai, I'm just wondering, we've fortunately got Adrian Teotahi here. He's done all the work on working out the catchments. Perhaps he could just address the audience briefly on how he did that. Kia ora, Tato. Kia ora. Te hanao te kena o te catchment site runga i te intake arui te reo me tāna te minute te pia me a mara mara no runga i te pika mao. Ki tato iu te kupe o a teke mao te kena i kuta te kei te intake te ngā i kakakua mao te wai. A re o mai a tai ka me infrastructure te i te runga i te inoa. Nā te mea tauro te uwa me eke me runga i te ngā peka o te mongo o te iti ao ka eke pōro me te wai rote i te catchment. A ki tato te i pae kena i runga tango tō māpu e uki te kena ki roto, roto i tō a riyari meu pōrna te mea. A runga i te mongo kua āmingi te mongo. So me uo me runga tiri ngai, ka re te wai eke me rote i te catchment, rote i te intake, ka eke ki wao. Nō re mato e karuke i te rei ki roko i te atu inua, ki tānga ngai i te rā inua. A nga tato me mara, a rui nga runga te kontu o te mongo, tato mongo e mene, a runga mai te peka eke mai ki rau. So, pōru o te uwai ka eke mai ki rau te i te intake, nui te aru pōru e runga te e kena. A ni te mea tāmana ko o mai e, a arure ka ni a koe, tōru nga koni te ngai. E mea aru kena, aru kena runga i te kontu o te inua. Ta i te nga, pōru o te uwa i te inua i runga ki te māka a māte akono, te land boundary o te catchment, Eke pōrua mai te wai i rotei te intake. Anything you do above there will be affected i rotei te intake. Mi tātou te manako tūtone e te rongo tāmutani. Nō te akaranga māi mi teku nō te takuoi. Nō te mea kumiti rea doa te akano. Pōrua te rongo tāmutani i rotei a hatukai. Tāmutani pai taro te oma i nāra. Kai rato e ariki te spray. Parakot pōrua te o spray mo te inno. Te runga te tika anga o te atu inno. Te catch me nō takuoi. Nā rato re te tuku anga tika. O te ire te bairu i nō re nei. E takapini rato ng kato tōru te tia pūwa pe te ngoro. Nā tīri a catchment kumitira e tukutara tu tika ngai e atu a ngānga i nāore ki rawe ia te katau Nā te mea pōrua tā tātou ngānga rāga ruti te ia o ka whiki e ruti te wai Nā te mea e me te wai ruti te intek e me ki te e unu rei nā tātou Nā te mea tātou i akaunau te nā te kaumani a kohune ki te tātou te atu inu e ki ākara rā tātou e a ka pēa tātou me tānga ngānga i te inu ruti te o te mea pūpunga te Nā te mea whatever we do up there will be affected with tātou intek Thank you very much for that clarification. And that's uh, really good, it's beautiful. But actually my question was, and I would like to still uh, submit that, is from the structures that you have in place, how many metres away are we allowed to do our things? When you get time, when you get around to it, can you drop us a figure, let us know. Um, the, the song, I'm really good, glad with that. That was a really nice answer. Um, but that didn't answer my question, actually. Not my point. Anyway, um, one, more thing, uh, uh, one more thing, I believe. Uh, Collecting of water, um, when we dig our own well, I'm very concerned because I'm a well as well. When we dig our own well, we get charged for that. When we catch water off our roof, we get charged for that. Can I have some clarification on that? Because it just sounds not so right. Well, thank you for that as well, uh, Wayne. A very good question, a good point. We saw that in the bill, and that's certainly something that we will be addressing and your concerns raised there. I can't see how Tutato Way will be responsible for rainwater that someone chooses to collect. So it certainly will take that uh, into consideration when the review is done of this act. Thank, Thank you very much, Mark, and uh, thanks for your patience. I'm sorry I asked so many questions, but I hope I asked some questions on your behalf too. Thank you. Thank you, Meleoni. Atu inua i reto i te o takua ine i runga e āpatonga inu. Tōku... Tōku manako e noo ni au ki kwa ni i roto i te e papatjuri. I tika i ni tō te au atu inua. 
Wajue ichikato rato iteo chuku anga chika iteo chwato itopo ki muri. Ichika ane to te atu enua no teo chwato ke eriki mua. Iti te chua chua ki te boja. Ito rato manaku ito rato manaku eh, marika kore. Iteo apinga ka chuku. My, my question, at, no, my question is this. In the past, landowners has been discussing and giving consent to what is to be established on our land. So my concern now is, do we still have a say for the things that will continue when this law comes into force? Can we say something of what is happening on our land? Not just to speak, but for our voices to be heard. So may I ask that this Lord give us that opportunity. And, and the reason why I'm stating this is for this reason. We all know that we will die and our children will succeed to our legal interests in the lands. So I wonder whether their voices will be heard then. That is my concern. え、ブライン Mason Chair to Tato Vai. When you do not when you do something on your land, you don't do not need to be heard by anyone. Because it's your land. The way this bill is drafted it does not provide for us to hear landowners. It asks landowners to hear us. So when we say this development may damage the water. The landowners will decide whether they agree or do not agree. And their decision will be final. The church of Amai, the Pau Amai Muak, the Akamatama, the church of Kari Ichikam. Originally, when you yeah. started talking, they, we did not have any rights. Yeah. Kari Manako Emia Tauti. I don't think that is not a right. Now I hear Akawa Itako to Akari Ama Otevai. My question is, who would judge you with the way you are? Who were police? Who were, who were police? Yes. Judges with God, not us. <laughs> who were police? Police who? I am coming from that angle. Hmm. I just want to protect our children's rights. The ultimate, yes, sorry, not chair. Thank you, thank you, Nodana Wiyang. Ki marama tato e te iti tangata, e toru ia popu atu inua ta tato e tūtone. O te au atu inua, o te inua i uta ki tō tato u pūpaipa. Ko te e te tai puputanga te rotu te e te catchment area, te ngai, ko kapu ia mai te wai te amai ki rotu e tō tato u pūpaipa. Ko te lua o te pupu o te au atu inua, o rātou te atu inua te aka tū ia the 
I want this to be included into this this bill. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, as a land rights advocate um, and activist, um, and being really concerned about landowners' rights and entitlements, um, I hadn't intended to speak uh, this evening. I just came along to um, listen and observe. But um, I'm concerned about uh, Clause uh, 13 on the composition of the Catchment Committee and their members. And it said, says in um, Section 2, the landowners on each title included in the catchment, all or part of which included in the catchment, must during the required period appoint a person to represent their interests on the catchment committee for that catchment. And then in clause 5, it says if the landowners on a title fail to appoint a person to be a member of a catchment committee within the required period, the authority may appoint a person to the catchment committee to represent the interests of those landowners. Now I want to bring my attention to um, my concern to the, um, to the committee is that um, a landowner, a person, if you have 700 or more landowners and seven kōpū uh, in a land, you've got a problem there. I think you need more than one person to represent the landowners. Um, because there's disputes. Uh, 
Um, and I'm speaking from experience, coming from two large corpus families, and we've had disputes just in house sites and areas that families are, um, you know, um, are, are trying to obtain for their own individual fam you know, families. I don't believe that this is a fair representation of landowners um, from each um, of the intakes. And I ask that I don't believe that one person can represent seven corpus who all have different uh, views um, when there's over 700 um, landowners. Okay, and just um, on that, I have chaired three meetings um, with three different kōpū on the island, with over 700 landowners, and the disputes between these families have been running for years. So I ask the committee to please don't just appoint one person, but to consider, you know, maybe three persons representative of the landowners of each of these intakes. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. We'll certainly take that on board. Um, Mr. Chair, I just wonder if uh, that was something that we that I looked into. Um, and Lindsay's made a, raised a very good point. So you've got the you've got the difficulty of making sure that you have a, adequate representation of landowners, but you also run in, run into the difficulty. You don't want the committees to be so big that they become unmanageable. So you know you've got those two things competing with each other. So, uh, but Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Kia ora to everyone tonight. Um, Diane Wilford, to anyone on um, Manu River, Avanani, um, Tutukuitu, and Taipara. I'm quite disturbed with this um, bill that has come out. I think we are being rushed into this. We haven't quite got over the bill of the immigration bill. And I only found out about this one on Friday. I've been trying to read it up on the internet. Today, only this afternoon, I went and picked up my hard copy to go through the fine print. Since I've been home, since I've come home in 2012, I haven't seen any improvement in our water. It's gone worse. We get told, conserve water. Don't waste it. Everything that we do is for the manu eri that come here. This place the whole bill is put on us in Rarotonga to carry the burden of this blowout of, of money. And then we're talking about a board and we haven't even finished the other part yet. They're still fixing and fixing and fixing all the lines around the island. I've been up to all the water intakes that I'm involved with. I see what they've done. Beautiful. But I don't see any more extra water. The water's only all the same. We just got these holding tanks. I go, how much water does it hold? Oh, it's enough to go and supply the you know the area for three days. So if we've got a massive drought, three days and we're out of water. Hang on, where are we gonna get the water from? If there's no water in the intake, there's not going to be any water in the tank. And here we are talking about boards, um, money. Excuse me, Diane, have you got a question? That we the can question is, is I would like this thing to be stopped for now, for us to think about it and give us a break so that we can actually condense and find out what this bill is all about because 
I'm feeling like we've been bulldozed here. Perhaps I'll let the, yeah. perhaps I'll let the TTV explain why there's no water running through the system yet. Uh, so it's Greg Longman, uh, TTV uh, CE. Um, we, there's a project, and um, Diane, you quite rightly pointed out there's infrastructure, but TTV are the operators, and that infrastructure hasn't been passed over onto TTV. It hasn't, hasn't been commissioned totally and passed on for us to manage that water. <coughs> the water you drink or you have currently is uh, generally passed through the existing water main which would have been <coughs> managed in the past by ICI. Okay. Uh, Kerana. Keep looking this Mario. way too. Okay. And yeah. after you, Mario will be after. Yeah. Uh, Kerana. Um, land on, on other two catchment, Kirukil, 109F, uh, uh, where land on is up there. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the, the section we just talked about, the, the landowners. I refer to page 24 in regards to the regulations. How does that tie up with the landowners? Because it tells you there that on the recommendation of a minister, they can alter the boundaries, alter anything, basically. So I wanted to know where is the landowner in here? The authority is given to the QR. There's, it stipulates how this goes. All right. Where's the landowner in here? Thank you. I'll ask uh, one of the team to explain that particular provision. Then about the provision, what do you it is mana e keroka it is minita it is a tuke it is a tuke it is a coating of the noon. Kari a taiku ama oteo at the noon notara to a tika. Brian Mason, Chairman TTV. Uh, I, ha I have to take responsibility for that provision. Um, in the definition of catchments, it says there is a definition in section 5 so whatever the QR does it must fall within that definition but I became concerned in preparing this bill that I may have left some landowners out of the of the catchment committee who should be in the catchment committee. But your concern has already been raised by the select committee and it's been suggested that perhaps the bill should be amended so that you can add landowners to the catchment but you cannot take them away. Because the sole intention or my sole intention was to make sure that any mistakes could be rectified. Yeah, thank you uh, for that answer. Um, I've got other questions, but I'll leave it for later. But my concern is that regulation really impinges on the, the rights of the, the landowners. 
Thank you. 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 The coverage of the Infrastructure Act under TTV, whereas Infrastructure Current is under TMB. And also the other reference to only the majority of landowners residing on Rarotonga. Do we have to be categorized separately as Rarotonga based and absentee landowners? As I hold POA for a lot of my not present on Rarotonga landowners. The uh, position with landowners uh, not residing in Rarotonga is the same as for any meeting of assembled owners. Uh, senior persons can represent their line. And persons can appear by power of attorney or proxy. Thank you. It's just uh, unlike the other corpus of seven, there's only the one corpu on this block. So again, there is another issue of uh, blo big block holders, very small numbers, as opposed to other block holders, large numbers. So yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, uh, we'll have uh, Paul and then. Uh In 2013, uh, the then Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Tereke Heather, had his first inaugural meeting with the Arangamana. Uh, this meeting was held in Atupare, Poikura. Uh, in that meeting, he made two important announcements. One was uh, the repair of all pipes, installation and repair of all pipes leaking around Rarotonga. And also the cleaning up of the water intakes. His second announcement was he made a promise that there would be no water charges and rates to the people on Rarotonga. At that announcement, Everyone got up and gave him a standing ovation. This is my question. <clears throat> Does that promise still stand today, given by the deputy, former Deputy Prime Minister, Teddy Heller, as Minister of the Motorway? Does that uh, promise still stand to the Rongomana in 2013? Or not. Thank you. I don't know if you're asking me or asking Tiriki Ola, but uh, yeah, that's a question you asked to Tiriki Ola. I think you need to ask him if he still stands by it. My, my, I've always been very clear, Paul. Yeah. I spoke to the court me over at the Puka Puka Hostel here, and the question to them was. Uh, should people get a free allocation of water? And yes. And the question, next question, what about people who waste water? No. They shouldn't be allowed to get away with waste water. So the agreement was every household should have an allocation of water that, that is free, shouldn't pay for. But those who do waste water, the only way to stop somebody from just running their tap without fixing it or wasting water is to impose uh, a cost or a tariff on that. And the second question, the third question then was, those who make money on the people's water, the hotels, the businesses, should they get their water for free as well? 
And the question was, the answer was no, they, they should be paid. The reality is poor. Every country in the world, every community, every study has been undertaken that if you improve the quality of water for people, the prosperity of that community increases. If the quality of water to households, to peoples and communities is poor, that community does not progress. So the aim of this bill is to provide clean water to all of our households and to businesses. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll rephrase that question. Has the current Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for this, for this bill, are you going to keep to their promise of no water charges to the people of Rarotonga? Up to a certain amount. Then if you waste the water, you will pay for it. Let me be clear, Paul. My job here is to serve the people, not to please the people. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honour, Nolene Brown again. Is um, we're still, I'm still uh, sticking to what it says up there, which is we're talking about catchment committees. Ladies and gentlemen, my family, Gachi Kainuku, are owners on Avena. The presentation earlier, the, the, you know, at the very beginning, shows that Avena seems to be providing up to 60% of the, of the um, area. I'm very disturbed then. We've only got four lands over here because our lands are so large. I know we've talk, you talked about that, but they're so large. To, you know, I've never heard of these other ones, but you know, may, may, um, I'll check with our owners on that. But it says Tūranga Are. I can see that Tūranga Are. All I'm saying is, I'd like it on the record, we really need to, exp you know, it's not like other ones where there's so many other names, you know, of lands on their committee, on, on their catchment. Our one, it seems to be one large block or three large blocks and then you would only get three people on it. That's really unacceptable to a catchment that provides 60% of the water. I'm, I'm just wanting you to put it on the record. You need probably more than three extra ones on these because everybody else has got, look at that, all these other ones have got lots of them and Avana, which uh, provides the most water, has only got four lands mentioned. Thank you. Oh. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think this gets back to the, the point raised before by Lindsay. Whether you've got four people or eight people or 16, they, they all have control of the catchment, so the question really is, what's the ideal number? But uh, not only is correct, as you'll have seen from the plan, uh, by far and away, Arvana is the most important supplier of water to the island. Nothing compares to Avena. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's another thing to take into account if it's a, a larger piece of land on the, in the catchment area, should they have more representatives than those who have smaller piece. Thank you, that will take that. Uh, uh, power attorney for Wakapa on the table. Uh, I only have one quest uh, question because uh, Wayne was up here and pretty much uh, asked all my questions. The question I want to ask is the water. Okay, I get that it's free. Um, all that, all this stuff. What I want to know is when that pipe runs into that meter, uh, when, the pipe, when that pipe runs into the meter that's going to get installed in front of uh, the old man and the old lady's home, are uh, they getting charged for that meter? And if uh, they are, how much? Yeah, you will not be charged for the meter. So, what you're saying tonight is the water's free and there is no charge on the meter and it's still under consideration, and it goes until all of this is finalised, yes? It, I think, first of all, the physical structure of the meter yeah. 
I'm sorry, Brian Mason, TTV Chair. Physical, physical structure of the meter has already been allocated as a cost for the project. It's not a cost for the consumer. The second thing is if, I think everyone needs to realise that it's got to be at least one and a half years before we can even make any charges. Because you've got to install the meters um, and you've also got to commission the project. Yeah. Uh, as has been pointed out, people are not going to pay for the quality of water they get at the moment. Okay. So, so there's no point charging until we improve the quality of the water and we can't charge until we install the meters. And until we install, install the meters, we don't even know how much water is being consumed. Mm. The installation of the meeting, of meters will be quite helpful because that will tell us how much water has been lost in the pipes. Because another issue is there's no point uh, penalising people to conserve water that until you make sure that you aren't losing uh, most of it in the pipes. And at the, mo at the moment, what percentage are we losing? Uh, it's, it's, it's been estimated at 40%. Yeah. So, at, yeah. At the moment, we estimate that 40% of the water is lost before we get, it even gets to the consumer. So that's the first issue to deal with. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I just have a notice, uh, other guests please, but uh, before that I have a notice. If you have a vehicle, you're blocking uh, a mama that wants to leave. If you have a vehicle number 8597, uh, please chip to your vehicle so the, the person in front of you can move out. 8597. Uh, okay, over here. ケラマイトマクテレオティニオイバンガ。ラマティディマ。エトオペルタイトオリマクトエトオリマクトウィ。え、イブトイディトアトニ。え、タタトウヤカルウォキネイ、ポイエポテ。デプレゼンテーションア
Uh, Brian Mason, Chair to Tatabai, I'm just wondering if I could ask my colleague Sam to clarify the comment that water rates have never been charged and paid. Naro kia Papa Sam, kia tutu mai norua i te akapouanga, ko te tutake anga mohoni no te wai. Okay, the water rates that was mentioned earlier when they started the system, and you know, as you understand, because in those years there were rates, land rates, when you go to the hospital, you have to pay, everything had to be paid because they had to raise the revenue to build other systems. Now, we had this yesterday, one of the, uh, the uh, member in the select committee raised about this subject about pain and then I said, well, they have been paying up until 1972 because there was a complaint. So uh, Papa Alapaji repealed that domestic rate, but not the commercial rate. So then in, in discussion, so I said, well, we have to be prepared and understand. So if you look at the statistics, we import, our import annually is about $200 million of, of goods of which 45 million is for foodstuff, and then 14 million of that is for booze, alcohol. We spend that much money on something, it's causing a lot of problem here. We have a lot of young ones, a lot of young ones accident, and then you got all the, you know, all the wives being beaten up by their partners, okay? So in other words, that what happens when they drink that, that way, that water, okay, and also, we import waters from New Zealand with these so-called chemicals. So we have, we have to be balanced in that. Water is a necessity of life. I have four children. I raised my, uh, my family in the 50s. Now the two of them in the 50s, the other two in the 40s. On the land which had no water. So I had to buy the water to sustain my, my family. And also I was involved in agriculture. I have my own system, I have groundwater. So, you know, tonight, wait that, put, put that in your head. Is it fair that we spend $14 million on booze? Not a cent for water? Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, I'll move on to Danny, please. Kerana Kotani Mataro, Tahu Hawi and Norumate, that we know. I have a question in relation to landowners. Many of us are landowners on each of these intakes and water catchment. From the top of the mount to the bottom to the sea. Ah. compensation. I would like to refer to the uh, area of compensation. Here is the section 25, 4. The landowners may ask for compensation as a condition to any such approval. <laughs> Compensation. So I would no say, if, 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 if a water catch no or a, a water tank is built onto my land, then according to this, I have the right to ask for some form of compensation. Because I noticed, it, it was mentioned earlier on, those on the catchment, which is upper part of the, of the land, uh. did not ask for any of such. They have sacrificed their land for the catchment. But for us, but for us down here, on the flat, we were not at that meeting. In a, we the mayor can say the solar e money will compensate here. That we know. 
the airport here to Turkey. We compensate here. Are you referring to other parts of the country in Maniki uh, for the lands that was used for solar? They've been compensated. They lands in Kentucky. They were to compensate. They were part in way what? It was two years that they appeared on the common. They go compensate here, Rado. And some other islands in the Cook Islands, uh, where development has been made by the government, they were compensated for. Yeah, you must have sacrificed it. So why should we sacrifice? We did not have any. We did not get the note card or to. We did not get the note. Check out the way free. Not the door. What the note card? We did not get the out. We got it. How did the make free? We did not get the out. No. The Karangara Lindsay. We are going to the court. We are going to do another. It's another. It's another. We did not get the. We are going to the court. We are going to do another. It's another. It's another. We are going to the court. We are going to do another. It's another. It's another. We are going to the court. Ya kamu kamu tak. Tak wira wira ngaji reti section four. Eh nanti itu nanti itu itu yang empat. Oh kita kita tak empat je kari wara. Eh tahu eh kita tece atau kumici kerang. Korat atau si air mai tu empat. Eh tece kerang ada itu itu. Ya itu wira terlebih itu korat atau si air mai tu empat. Di tahu ini kan itu rumah tu itu inu kaya rapat. Kita kau mepet yang awak tera. Ia kat tahu ia tera tu tu awak itu. Di di luar tak kau ia. Ah, apa mana mu? Ya. Kau kau ia. Kau kau ia terlupa. Brian Mason Chair to Tato Vai. There is a very big difference between the catchments and what happens under this bill and what's happened with the solar power projects in the Pa'anua and what's happened, for example, with the savage lands in Nukuteri College. With those lands, the compensation was for taking the land, and the landowners no longer have that land. It belongs to the government. With the catchments, there is no taking of land. But, but if Tatato Vai wants to build anything, on your land, it must pay you. It it you. One more question. Uh, section 10. Power to borrow. The manna kia akakayo. What if the loan went on default? Abe nagari tu tagi e dia kayo. And the bank seized some assets. What are they gonna seize? Uh, Brian Mason, uh, Chair to Tatavai. Um, to Tatavai owns some trucks. A photocopier, <laughs> a bike, motorbike. Uh, the reality is, no one is going to lend to us. No one. We we don't own anything. So, take it up. Uh, uh, look, I don't. I don't care. Um, no, I'm. Um, yeah. Take it out of there. Yeah, take. Take it out of the bill. Take it out. Yeah. yeah. Why why put it in there if it's no one gonna. Please. <laughs> Air itu yang kayu orang nak tu itu, tiap tu tu orang muni di kalangan ia dia kata kayu itu the loan repayment fund. 
natia e ako noi de kayu ti ka ka tupu ya kare nati to ta to wai kare nara to itu ta kiti ya kayu e putu putu anga ke le de pe ya ka ta anga ke i te i te ka ngaro i ta ta to kayu ka te pasere ya ta ra to te kayu anga te ko pai pe te ra opinar a ta ko yang otra so pini ke ka ta no ya ti ta ta ro e ta Bueno, ha que ganado tanto, todo en oro, mona y oane. Eh, en oro que ha reído todo esto, mai jeito de aquí. Eh, tú mai no, o te yo te te ahí. Pues ya, maybe gari de uya, mai pati pati. Se te tau mai ra de tata tau tu le tama no goi murine. En ai da ku kite mai ya we de, karo ko ko to de control y te ta iwa tu mai e, karo ko mai tu wei. Di pasini awi mo yung voto di komite. Di ta iyo mo tuare. Tago yung kita yung rotong ane. Yung ta si ka iyo mo tiu. No ratu ra to ratu bay. No ratu ra to ratu tangka. To ra e o tiu ta ratu yung uji yut. Muri mo ito ratu ar. E ara way di ta. No rin mo ito ratu bay. They are not connected di kiri mo the main. So to ratu bay no ratu ra. Build the house, and then rogo mai dia way norato. Eti era kare mati ano norato way. So kapati yung yung koto rogo to yung control idi yawo. Rogo yung tabu yung yung tatatu pier. Nanato yung nanato yung nothing, no cost to the government. So right ako family yung ito yawo tiu. You take the value. That's how they 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 get their water supply. Nanato yung yung the roof. The way norong yung tang. The roof. Madu, the umutuare, no madu red, no madu roof. Are you ready with the government? But you don't need to go to the wrong agent. The moment you want me to get in the other depot, they let you look at the tank. What did I make a particular? Or what did I do? You did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. A blessing the from above. So why are we controlling it? So we are going. Ya kati yema yero di di tu le tamono. Di tu lu no mato iya jutaki. Abadi yogi di kumi di ekiri chima iya jutaki go. Iro di di pir. No demi di outer no di mato way no to mane. Pulo di muni di di borrow iya di gom mani di spend iya. All went to Rotonga, not the Ittak. So, Abadi Yogi Goto. Kirishi Mai Aijutaki, Anga Mai Goto Yogi Tai Tsuri, Mai Aijutaki Na Kewo. Tomato Pao Aijutaki, a boat dorado. Stand alone and other from very similar to their pong. So, now it's the establishment of the motorway, like their pong. So we are asking for Ajutak. If if you can do the same for our island, Ajutak, we can we can uh, look after our own self. We can. We've done it with the power, and now we can we can do anything. So how about you? I will go to Italy. Ajutak is different. I am able to do the Peter O. No Ajutak. In the time of the power, make a happy tear or happy tear. Because the hotel now, if Hajitaki is going to be included under one board, the only money I borrow here for the, for the motorway never been, I, I've never heard of any sense being spent to Hajitaki. So what, if in case of a go to Itivai, why is Hajitaki responsible to, to have Rauta, to pay off whatever he owes to whoever, to the donor? So, to come on away, go to, I got to go to, no matter, you know, no matter, you know, 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 
So we all contributed. いたがまたやんだだとちびてねこのことでインポジテタイエルはたらやかけてくるメルはたらいてフォーナイエルはたらいたらとどうじてフォーナイアメレフォーダージでマンアドンディゲアカムリドラエリスティトタケニダドゥ
from its users. It sounds a little like a lot of money. So what does that translate in terms of cost per liter of water? So if that's the case, how much would it cost per household? Or a grower? Or a business? And so forth. I think this is what really, uh, this is the second issue that affects everybody. And they want to know some more information about it. And this is probably as good a, a forum as any to, to, to kind of bring out, to, to release more information so that the, the public in general can be better informed rather than having wild guesses about this and about that, which is totally untrue. So I don't know if the figures have been worked out, but surely somebody in the organizations or the powers that be must have come up with some figures or some information that they can release so that we are better informed. Now, if they have and I haven't heard about it, I wouldn't mind hearing it again. Or, and if it hasn't been done, then somebody ought to do something about it. If they haven't figured it out how much it's going to cost, there's something very wrong. So I'll leave the questions here with you and then uh, good luck. Brian Mason, uh, Chair Tatata Vai. Um, Jackie previously and now George have raised issues regarding tariffs, which is a pro uh, useful because that's our section now. Um, it, it, there isn't something wrong in the inability to work out exactly what the costings will be. We can't work out what the um, costings will be until we take over management of the project um, because there are a lot of um, variables involved. Uh, but more importantly, we can't work out what the costing would be to the public until the, we know the amount of water that's being consumed by the public. Okay. The figure of four million is uh, speculative, uh, although it does have, have some elements in it which I think are fairly accurate. Okay, but that's one off. Is a 2.8 include any tomato advice, sir? Um, no. No, okay. It includes a lot of um, setting up and right. establishment costs. Okay. The, the, the current budget is um, 2.8 million, but a lot of that, or quite a bit of that, involves set up costs. And currently, that's been funded by the Crown. Um, and uh, even if you take four million, that that would work out to four hundred dollars per person, or a bit over a dollar a day of those residing in, on Rarotonga. Uh, but we have to factor in that that um, is a cost that's not been established. And secondly, we need to take into account that the Act has a provision in it which you will have noticed, uh, which whereby under section 31, the minister can direct uh, the authority to supply certain amounts to the public without charge. And when it does that, the cost of that will be borne by the Crown. And that's the way we'll make sure that TTV is self-funding, but still affordable to people. At the moment, I'd like to think people to think not in terms of the cost of things occurring that they may not agree with, but just the principle. 
it appears to me that most people don't have a problem with people paying for wasting water um, and um, that should be the principle looked at or paying a fair charge. The real issue is how much and we can't uh, ascertain that at this stage. The, at the moment when we have periods of drought the uh, water pressure, the, the system is under pressure. The amount of water in the streams diminishes very considerably and it is not correct there's always plenty of water. The pressure drops particularly I think in places like Rutaki and also taro planters can be affected and also aquatic life in the stream can be damaged by the lack of water. It's not fair that people pay nothing and they can waste water and, and other people on the island lose pressure and taro planters suffer. People who waste water should pay for it. Just a few points that might seem minor that I'd just like to raise. So in um, under section 27 is a limitation of water supply. So if, if for some reason somebody, a family, is unable to pay a water bill that they have to pay, then and after many notices, this family's water will be cut off? No? No, the, the, the suppose so, Brian, sorry. Before we go, just, just mention your name, please, Jackie oh. Tsuara. Jackie Tsuara. Sorry, uh, Brian Mason, Chair, TTV. When you receive other utilities like electricity, if you don't pay, it gets cut off. There is a principle that water is so important for life that it should not be cut off. So that's why the Act provides that if somebody doesn't pay for the water and they're a domestic consumer, TTV can restrict the supply, but it cannot cut it off. So it's just restriction and who will determine what that restriction will be? Well, I think that's a fair point. Um, but given that the government has announced that there will be a free allocation, the restriction would have to be, uh, couldn't be below what they get for free anyway. So that should, that should create a, a level of security. But you've got a family who already has a, power, has, already has a water bill that they can't pay, so the additional water that you're going to provide for them because it's an essential of life, it's not going to be paid for, that's going to be free. I, I think if we answer that, we have cases today of people who can't afford to pay their bills. Uh, we have a hardship uh, allowance to help people out. There is a destitute to help people out. Internal affairs will help people out that are in genuine hardship. And I think uh, what this does is for people who are late in paying their bill or they choose not to pay, there is a limitation on the water they can get. It doesn't cut their water off. Unlike the electricity department, it will cut your power off. But for cases of hardship, we have other mechanisms, not under Tutatu Way, that look after people that are in trouble. Although I think you, you have made a valid point because what if Tatato Vice says we'll give you one litre a day? So, you know, that's, that's a fair comment. Um, perhaps it should be prescribed. Um, and just another point that seems minor but may not be is that the authority under Section 29, the authority may make a periodic charge regardless of whether a customer uses water from a connection for the availability of that water to that connection. So if I have a section that I'm planning to build on and I have a water connection, but I have not yet built on it and I have not yet used it, I may get a periodic charge for that connection. Uh, uh, Ryan Mason, the Chairman to the title, well, I've got a simple answer for that. The Select Committee has always said, already said to me, take it out. Oh, thank you. Um, and just, I guess I want to bring an example today of water usage at the whole household level. So we're in COVID-19. We've been encouraged to have home gardens. So we will use more water 
if we have home gardens. So will the authority take into consideration the allocation to a household to include home gardens? And then, if so, how big can those home gardens be? Uh, so Jack, that they do not pay I, I, for that yeah, allocation yeah, to... Yeah, Brian, if I may, yeah, sure. uh, those are issues broader than Totato Way. So if the government is encouraging people to grow and plant, then the government should be putting in place incentives and initiatives to allow them to do that without additional costs, yeah. I might add. So that would probably be something we would expect from an uh, initiative from Ministry of Agriculture that will help household gardens. Uh, we would have to look at initiatives like in, in order to make the most effective use of water, should these gardens have drip irrigation or use the technology to make the use of water more effective, uh, yeah. rather than looking at this, because this is not going to solve the problem. But it, it, and yeah, it will it, take into, uh, into consideration a greater allocation, maybe, because of the home gardens, well, to encourage people to continue to have home gardens? Uh, Brian Mason, the Chair Satata Vai. Now, Jackie, you, you've raised a curl. I, I wish you hadn't come tonight. Um, the, we, we see in a lot of countries you can have an agricultural rate and a commercial rate and a residential rate. One of the problems on Rarotonga is a lot of people still have little farms on their homes and they sell at stalls and so on. Um, the person who's got five villas that are together, he gets charged a commercial rate and he looks at the person who's got five different homes on B&B, &B, but they're residential homes in different parts of the island. He says, why am I being charged a commercial rate and not that other person who's got a residential rate? One of the big challenges with the tariff is to determine where a fair cutoff point is between agriculture, residential and commercial. And on Rarotonga, that's going to be difficult. Thank you. Thank you, Tine. Um, Tine Ponia, I'm from Nikau. I just backtracking um, to the functions of TTV. I see that uh, one of your functions is to deliver water, which I see is essential. Um, my question is, is the intention to deliver water to every household? I ask the question because um, I'm one of those taxpayers who actually don't get free water at all and haven't been since I've been on the island. We're not on the mains, the mains don't reach us, so I've been paying for my water. Um, I totally support the principle of um, those who waste water should pay for it. And even more so, I don't think that um, the use of water, you know, people should be entitled to unlimited amount of water. For someone like me who's been paying a lot for water, we're paying for our own water and we're also paying for your water through taxes um, input. So I just want to, you know, just put it out there that while you're enjoying free water and maybe wasting water, I'm paying a lot for water. So um, if TTV um, means that you know your water will be delivered to households like mine, then um, I'm fully in support of it. And so um, I fully support the principle of those who waste um, should pay. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Uh We'll move on before we have one question. We'd like to get through the rest of the, uh, the parts of the bill. We've covered a lot of it, uh, but we'll have this question. Maria? I have three questions. I'm a landowner on Manu River, the Kauai catchment. Um, My question is more around the comments made by our chairman about meeting with the Arumana around fees to pay, whether we should pay water or not. But the question here is, if we have come a long way together working with government and landowners, and right up to today, um, whether I have a right or some kind of authority or some kind of influence on the tariff rate, 
whether I, as a landowner, working with government, can have a look at these rates and set these rates? That's one question. Um, the second question, away from this question, around section 13 mentioned before, section 13, subsection 5. But I'm, this is rather away from the question. Um, we talk about the failures of landowners not being represented. My question here is, is there any clause in this legislation to state the failures of the authority to contact or make contact to the landowners to be represented? Is there anything in the legislation? That's the second question. <laughs> Um, I guess the last, it's not a question, it's more of support in regards to the idea mentioned or maybe the request or submission around getting the landowners represented on this board. As I can see, that CIC is probably not represented here, but maybe the minister represents them, but looking at having a representative for landowners on this board of directors. And because we have come together a long way, we should include landowners right to the passing of the bill and of course in the future of this bill um, and of course including representatives instead of just one and having a few number of representatives to represent our landowners so thank you you can answer my two questions then uh, yeah, okay Brian uh, Mason to you, uh, to the um, uh, Tariffs, uh, uh, this is a personal view, they should be set by um, professional bodies that don't have a self-interest. Now, it would appear in the bill that uh, it's a, it's the Tatavai can set its own tariffs. So even though it has to be self-funding, we could set a high tariff and all the directors could go to Europe and look at work, some waterworks there and have a bit of a holiday. The intention is that the competition and regulatory authority, which is established, already established to look at telecom, will uh, include, be amended to include uh, a review or a determination of the tariffs of Tata Vai and I understand electricity charges with Te Aponga. So at the moment, um, the, intent, the government's intention, which has been sent to, uh, expressed to us, is that an independent regulatory authority, and not ourselves, will make the final decision on the tariffs. On the second issue, which is a very, um, very pertinent point uh, about, um, uh, well, what if the meeting of assembled owners is not called? So that way we could just have our own people on the um, catchment committees. The uh, Te Vai has an obligation to call for to call those meetings and to pay for them. So under the Act, we have to do it. Now, I've just trying. I've just been trying to look where the provision is, but I know it's in there. Which one? Um, where we have to call um, land meetings? Yeah, it's there, isn't it? Yeah. So under the Act, there is a requirement for Te Vai to call the meeting of assembled owners, landowners. They cannot not do it. Just a, a query on the board memberships, the directors. Uh, this falls under investment corporation because of the, the legislation around the appointment of boards and directors on boards, all government boards, including Tutato Vai boards. And there are qualifications for people to be on a board, um, age, well, at least 21 years old, in the criteria of Tutato Vai, uh, must have somebody, at least somebody with a knowledge and experience of reticulation or water supply network, someone with an experience in governing organizations or policy expertise, someone with a degree or a major in accounting or finance to have a finance capability on the board, uh, someone with a legal background to have legal capability on the board, uh, someone with experience uh, of private sector running a business with a track record of successfully operating businesses and someone who has a good understanding of the socio-economic matters such as land tenure in the Cook Islands 
and social impacts on the Cook Islands. Here's a criteria that's been set down on boards. Uh, probably a few weeks ago, you may have seen in the newspaper ad advertising for those who would like to be considered for director positions on any of our boards to please put their expressions of interest and their CV to Investment Corporation so that we have a pool of good qualified Cook Islanders that can be appointed onto boards. So none of our boards, the airport board doesn't have requirement for landowners or others, none of our boards has requirements for landowners. It has requirements for people who are qualified to manage uh, what are essentially multi-million dollar assets. So that's the, the qualifying criteria for board membership. Thank you. Tiriro. I want to ask uh, at the close hour. Uh, 66. 66. ABC. Um, the, the, they're the ones we. Yeah, with um, section 66 A and B, I don't think we need A and B, but. Um, I've been asked to make that much tighter. So, in other words, it's, it's, you can't just change the boundaries. So that will change. My question is, how, how did you come with what? Why is why? Oh, oh, I, I included that clause because I was concerned that I may not have got the boundaries of the catchments correct. And I was concerned that I may have missed some landowners. But I, I understand what you're saying that. Okay, what about C? Oh, oh, see, it, oh, the select committee have already said that that's far too broad and there should um, be no prohibition on the use of, um, obviously, of rainwater and water tanks. And there should be, but there should be the ability to create rules governing the use of wells, artesian, water supply, Underground water table, rivers and streams, because no, no, you need no. rainwater, you but not rainwater. Rainwater will go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ご愛でらみとたと if we have a long periods of, uh, of drought, 
I would say five years. Do you have any means of supplying water to our people? As stated before, we have been very reliant on tourism for our economy. So as we come back to the water, if we don't have water for five years, do you have any means of providing water for our people? Now, if we don't have rain for five years. Ah, drought for five years. Uh, Brian Mason, Chair to Tarawai, that question is too difficult, and as one does, you hand it to the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so it's Greg Longman from um, Tatasovai, um, the Chief Executive. So thank you, Brian, for um, passing that on. Um, if we don't have rain for five years, that's a... a uh, act of, in biblical proportions, in my opinion. Uh, I think I've uh, not heard of any place apart from some deserts which don't have rain uh, in these. <laughs> and in, in countries um, I've worked in Kiribati, so Brian's reminded me, um, they have uh, limited rain, they do not have a lot of, um, they do not have any rivers in Tarawa, which is the southern part of an atoll. It's a very flat land, and they have a lens, or freshwater lens. And the lens, the water has been incredibly um, uh, in, impacted by um, um, uh, pollution. And so there are preserves for areas uh, which are where no. Um, <coughs> Um, development can take place to, to allow a supply from um, those, those parts for the island. Um, in terms of uh, what water we could supply if there wasn't any rain, that's can, a very difficult can, question. Can I, can I help you solve this? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, I'll speak in Maori, he will interpret. Hmm. I would say Tuato today, Muti. Tuato Mu. there's plenty Tewane. because we Wait. have the rain. Tewane. There is enough water. Tewane. Let us not wait until it, uh, we have the drought, then we find means of getting water. Tewane. Not a problem, not a medicine. I have a suggestion because I know that things are changing now. Um, may I suggest that the authority looked into how we can uh, bring water out of sea, seawater. Not a mere. We have a lot of reserve, we can't use them all. This is the time for us to trial, to test, to pilot it. Don't wait until we get into the, the trouble of no Thank water. you. Albert? Thank you. Uh, because I'm not a learned lawyer, May I bring our attention, I'll just read it from the bill, uh, part 8, section 63. The liability of authority limited. The authority must use its best efforts to provide continuous service. This is the, the, the part, the end part that I'm not quite don't understand about, but is not liable even if it has been negligent. Then the question here is, who is going to be li uh, liable from A to D? Who is going to be liable from A to D? Thank you. Uh, Brian Mason, uh, Chair, to title by um, the, the relevant sections um, that you've raised are 19, 
44 and 63. Section 63 um, is to avoid the Crown facing a very potentially large liability. So, for example, if a dam collapsed, then the uh, Crown could face um, uh, pretty significant consequences. E tutu no runga iti a manako ko te o ta iyo manako te te ta iyo irawa o te ture tamana ko te taru iyo mai kiro to ira ta inga urumaiwa irawa anga urumaa irawa ono urumato ko te tumura o te irawa ono urumato ru e paruru i te corona mi te mea e o manamanta te ta ite ka tupu mai mi te mea wawa e i te iyo nga i kakapuai. Yeah, excuse me. Just to cut it short. Uh, would it be then possible for you as a lawyer to include what you are saying into the bill? So me, as an unlearned lawyer, would pre pretty much, much understand it. Well, I, I hope, I think you've read it correctly, yes. that the Crown it's is, there. It's, it. the Crown's off the hook. So some people might say, oh no, that's right. Uh, that's not right. It's not but, right to me. Yeah. But so why I ask the question is to my this is my understanding if somebody from the motherway come into the site on my land to fix some problems with the water then something happens while I'm standing there watching them do their job and I get injured and my building get damaged but if only you put those what you you saying into the bill then I wouldn't have stood up the uh, no, no, that's fair enough. The, the clauses are fairly standard, but that doesn't necessarily that mean they're right. Um, sec you see, first of all, you've got a company. A company's not a person, so it's either liable or it's not. In section 44... But I'm a customer. Uh, your customer, yes, that's great. In section 44, directors, employees and officers are protected as long as they act in good faith. That means that they act honestly, and they don't act recklessly. And the same applies to the catchment of committees in section 19. But it has been a debate between governments and the public for years, the extent to which uh, public officials should or should not be liable. So the point you've raised is, um, uh, is very valid and you've read the bill exactly as it says. And you don't agree with it, I mean, accept that. Thanks. Uh, uh, secondly, the last one, I know that the committee is the committee, not the and all the way to two of my 66 regulations. From what you are out, that I two of my kids go to work, they do what they need to do. Manak, thank you. I am happy with, uh, in regards to section 33, that part of it should be removed, and I would like to thank the committee for considering that. 66. I would like to speak about uh, the historical setting of our country. Uh, and one of the important parts that I would like to ask is the, the standard of the water. Uh, in regards to the rainfall data. Because when this, uh, when this came up, we have been through uh, a drought season. It was the period from 1980 to 2000. Especially the southern Cook Islands. It was known as the drought period for the southern part of the Cook Islands. And before this period from 1980 to 2000, it's, it's been a wet season. 
And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up is for us to know that there is a cycle in, the, in our region, the Pacific. Mm. And what had been um, said before, uh, before the, the public, this time that they were mentioning is about a wet season. Yeah. And this uh, wet season will last about 30 years. Yeah. And because uh, the, there is a change of weather, the, the climate is getting warmer. Mm -hmm. And in our region, we will be receiving more water. But, but for us today, we are looking at how we will manage our water at this period where there is a lot of water. So so if we would say that uh, we are wasting the water, I don't think it will, it will suit. Yeah. Next presentation, Rainfall Data, the Ministry of And maybe in, in your next presentation, you should have some data of the rainfall that we have received. Mm. And secondly, uh, my question, maybe it will relate to the Deputy Prime Minister. And maybe for the time after this consultation. When this bill finally gets into Parliament, who will vote for this bill? I believe that only members from members of parliament from Rarotonga and maybe Aitutaki will have to vote on it, but not including the other parts of the Cook Islands. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tina. The Pauanga no longer the Nahuanga, a Kuetika Iki, Itea, the Apirane, Irotato Tato, Paramani, Hotel, Memo Paramani Kato, a Memo Paramani Rato, no the Kuki Island. So every member of parliament has an entitlement to vote on this bill. Just as every member of parliament has an entitlement to abstain themselves from this bill. But it is the right of every individual member of parliament to do his job as a parliamentary member for the parliament of the Cook Islands. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I just want to... Yes, uh, Sam. Um, Sam Nova. I'd like to... Uh, oh, it doesn't mean it's only you. It's only you. It's only you. <laughs> if you... Remember the slide I showed on our rain cycle, a uh, rain cycle, the rain water, government has subsidized over 2,000 water tanks to the consumers in, in Rautong. The question is, how many of you have been catching that coming? <laughs> I'll give you an example in the map. A one meter by one meter by one meter by one mil, you get one liter of water, double that. So if you have a roof area, work out how big is your roof and whatever rainfall that falls down and you multiply that gives you how much you know, you'll catch up your roof. Now the rainfall for, the, for Rarotonga is about the height of that door or this door is 1.9 meters of that. Now if you've got a quarter of an acre or it depends how big is your land, that's the potential yield you get off. So, as Tinino mentioned earlier, you know, these are good years. What about when it comes to the drought? Because I was part of the design team to what the system that's the motorway cannot sustain us if we have two months, three months, no rain. 
because in the report it recommended we should have bulk storage. Bulk storage. And David raised earlier about the period with, when we had uh, low rainfall in the 80s. So in Aurangi, a 10 million liter storage was built, the reservoir. But unfortunately, something happened to that one. It's our political uh, rugby. Now, when it comes to water, the water, the question is, you know, the water that falls on your roof, good, clean water. All you need to do is build it, put it in a tank. I was involved with the water uh, tank project. So we started Archie with this water tank for people there. And then my, um, my followed, and eventually everybody followed that. In other words, if you're given a rainwater tank, subsidized by government, make the most of it, collect what comes off your roof. Not to rely on the system. Sometimes the system fails, and then we all complain about it. If you have your own water, you're flexible. So all the projects I've been working with, building, and also include a water tank on the ground to collect what comes off the roof. So in other words, you know, you know, we're in this, in this world, we all got to work together out. Don't rely on the government. They can't support all of us. We need to pay our part in this. Did I hear you? No, did you? Thank you. Yeah. You? Yeah, Kirana, Hugh Baker. I live in Nicole, and I don't get any water, right? <laughs> um, in the early piece, um, the the uh, excuse for Tamato Bay was we're losing 70% of our water uh, through leaky pipes. Well, it's pleasing to see now that's reduced to 40%. Um, there was a petition uh, presented to to government, um, and government didn't take it seriously. So I'd like the select committee to revisit the Tamato Bay position. The the Butterway petition, um, because we've dealt with many of the questions that have come up today. Basically, uh, Cook Island is fun fundamentally are opposed to paying for the water. We looked at that. There were um, concerns about the cost at that point, which was 60 to 70 million. Nobody knows what they are now, and where are they going to fall those costs in, rela in relation to the Tatu Bay? Um, and the, the other issue is the use of groundwater. What is um, the Tatu Bay uh, going to, are they going to start tapping into that aquifer level, or are we going to wait until? Uh, there's a drought. Um, the, I'd like to pick up on the point that um, uh, Teddy Kirongo made regarding the representation on the board. I really don't think, without, um, I'm not wanting to denigrate any MPs from the other islands, but I think it should be more appropriate that all local MPs uh, who are resident on Rarotonga should be on the select committee. Um, because if you look at things historically, uh, since internal self-government, we've managed to lose, reduce our population from roughly 20,000 to 10,000. Um, and it's due to partly, or yeah, mainly through the parliamentary system. We're not getting adequate representation with the structure we've got, right? Um, you've got the, guy, the guys from Mitiara get picked on for some reason, um, and Manahiki um, are carrying more weight per number of um, uh, number of voters who vote for them. The other thing is the select committee is setting the, 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 um, the, um, the groundwork for all our children's futures, right? And so I think the, the political side of it has to be put aside and it should be uh, perhaps by consensus 
um, with the representation in Parliament, okay, everybody perhaps to see what the local MPs have to say. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you. Um, okay. I was trying to figure out what the question was. So. Okay. Thank you. I think you've asked a question in terms of who pays for it, what is Tōtātua Vei's role. Uh, it will be clear on that. There is no obligation on Tōtātua Vei's operations and cost recovery to repay any debt, regardless with Tōmātua Vei or not. That is managed under the Loan Repayment Fund uh, of government's overall management of its debt, all debt. So Tōtātua Vei, to be clear, has no role in raising money to settle debt on, uh, on Te Mata Wai. Uh, the second one in terms of board selection, uh, that really is a matter for uh, Parliament to vote who goes on the select committee, and this is who they have voted on, uh, regardless of whether they're from the Outer Islands or not. Uh, if uh, these are the members that have been elected by Parliament, uh, then they are the members that are on the select committee. So, thank you very much. Um, Hugh, uh, Brian Mason, Chair TTV. Just in respect to that, I'll draw your attention to section 26, um, 5B, which specifically provides that, um, ex that we, we can't uh, take on any of the loans from Tomato Vai. Uh, in the respect to the drought, the, the issue raised before, um, uh, Sam mentioned the reservoir that was built and within was abandoned. The T, uh, the TTV has been looking at putting very large tanks, because we can't use the reservoir anymore, but it's actually a big area, uh, putting very large tanks into that reservoir to increase the reserve supply. We have an obligation to look to the future in our Act about future needs for water. And Greg can just mention um, his experience in Vanuatu. All oh, right. Um, so it's Greg Longman, um, TTV uh, Chief Executive. Um, Hugh, I don't know if you address the question, but uh, on desalination. Um, no, okay, um, let's don't. For, so if you look well, the ways, what you do in, drought. in droughts for groundwater and other things. Well, certainly, okay, for desalination, uh, it's, it's a very fairly complex and it's a very expensive use of um, uh, electricity and that can have consequences depending where the electricity is generated from. Um, there's four plants, to my knowledge, or at least three, in Vanuatu. Uh, which was supplied or financed by the Japanese government and they very rarely worked uh, because of the maintenance issues to keep them going. There's small plants, there's large plants in Australia which are very expensive to run as well. So in 66C it says that the Queen's representative may have rules and regulations around different points, including desalination. Um, uh, on that point, if I referred to Sam's re previous slide about the water cycle, um, the rivers are filled not just from the rain which drops directly above that into the river, it's supplied by the water flowing from the surface, but also from ground water and in that item 66C, there's um, potential for rules and regulations to look at um, Wells Artesian water supply, underground water table, rivers and streams. And a part of that is to s ensure that the integrity of that water table, um, either upstream into the catchment or further downstream, is not in, in the integrity is not impeded. There are parts here in uh, the Cook Islands and certainly in uh, other parts of the world, Australia uh, is, is classic uh, where the artesian well and the artesian water is not uh, drinkable um, and a part of that is over 
um, uh, removing too much water can increase salinity. Um, so that's why the, there's a provision here for potential um, to um, look at uh, rules around certain um, activities which may impede on the ground water. Um, and the last part of that, um, section 66C, I think you mentioned, was about, there was uh, talk about rain water tanks and um, rules and regulations around that. The I think we've covered this, uh, group. Have we? yes. yes, we've covered it. Those are out. <laughs> so I'm just looking at our program. There's only a few more uh, parts to get through, Brian. Maybe we can get through those last ones yeah. and then uh, open it up for questions again. Yeah, I, I think um, it, it, the, it's all right with the meeting. The, we have covered a number of these slides in our discussion. There's nothing really to add. Um, so if we go on to um, Must Connect. Um, yeah, next, next one after that. Yeah. Um, limiting supply, we discussed that. Um, Connect and supply, yeah, I think we can. Offences. Uh, yeah, that's probably the next one. Restricting flow, we've discussed that. Of, yeah, so we, we got the Tatata Vai board. Um, and then the next one after that is. Um, uh, wasting water fraudulent dealings. Yeah. Have we got to that yet? Yeah, next one. Um, that's, we've had a discussion about offences. I don't know whether anyone wants to raise that again. Um, and the next the next one there, yep, the damage. Yeah, again, that's all that. Now, the, the next one is the resale of water. And it's 33, um, yeah, I was going to speak to that. The, um, the bill has a provision that you need the approval of Tatato Vai to resell water. And um, one of the reasons behind that is, uh, for example, I think it was in the Hawke's Bay, two large Chinese companies set up and they've drawn uh, to, to create bottled water and they've drawn so much from the aquifer that local farmers and residents have said they've got no pressure left and um, there should be some control over uh, the resale of, wa resale of water. The chairman pointed out, he said, well, if you're in a restaurant and the restaurant uh, sells uh, water to you, um, is that reselling and does every hotel and restaurant require to tatavise permission? So that's not what it's intended to cover. I, I don't think people should charge for water at restaurants anyway, but that's just a personal thing. So we may need to refine that a bit to deal with the issue that we are trying to address. Uh, but that's the intention behind it. The next slide. That's really yeah, that's you. Testing water, sir? Oh, testing water, yeah. Yep. Uh, so it's Greg Longman, um, <coughs> TTV uh, Chief Executive. Um, yeah, the bill um, requires that testing of water is monthly at water stations and at, uh, for the supply of the public. Um, there is um, a regime where we will exceed the requirements of testing water monthly to, um, um, to meet other, or to, to meet um, well, future potential standards, but also um, uh, we, we've got a regime for testing water which is more stringent than the monthly. That's good. Um, and then we um, we move on to the regulation provision, which um, you, we can flip through all four sides regulations, um, because we've had a very lengthy discussion on that uh, section. Yeah, and, and then that's it. After that, we just have the consequence, consequential amendments to other legislation. Um, there's only one of them I would mention that's an amendment to the Rarotonga Water Ordinance. Uh, uh, some have expressed a concern who ha are involved in the court action 
that that would affect their court action. But there's an act called the Acts Interpretation Act that says that when you commence a proceeding, any repeal or change of that act afterwards does not affect the proceeding. That's it. I think the chairman's walking out. <laughs> so, um, uh, thank you for your patience. Can I congratulate the the two uh, the officials? It's a career in my Tatu Pirane. Does anyone have any other further questions I'd like to raise at this point? Yes, Danny. Your Honour, Danny Mataro. Um, the reselling of water. Now, let's say Sam over here already built a dug a well where he can deliver a truckload of water to me. And when I'm short of water, I pay him $80. And that's already happening. Some 160. So where does that fit in this bill? Because uh, it mentions without the permission, it, there's also a clause, a clause that says, I think that's the clause that we cut out, but I'm not sure if, if the C part is going to be cut out. I just want to ask that question. Yeah, but somebody who collects bulk water for the purposes of resale would have to seek the approval of uh, Te Vai, but um, one of the complaints has been that, that there should be some criteria. In other words, the type of advice shouldn't be allowed to just say, yes, you can do it and you can't. It should say um, things like um, uh, uh, approval will, will be granted unless it will damage the water supply, or the shortage of water, and so on. So the, but the reason is, why yeah. I ask him for the water is because you couldn't deliver it. You had nothing. So I went somewhere else. Yeah, I think the point is being raised is uh, if, yeah. if someone brings their own water yeah. from the ground and sells it to somebody else, that's not part of Tutato Way. That's, okay. It's only if you take water out of Tutato Way system, then there's a yet seek yeah. a permission for that. And that has been an issue in the, in the past, yeah. But I think the, the thing that people need to realise is that this is not a case of um, a licence. This okay. is just trying to manage the system. Manage, okay. so, yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So I guess that answers the next question that I have, is I've got eight tarot patches that relies on continuous water that comes from a separate valley, from the catchment valley, and it just grows into these tarot patches, and down the bottom of the last one, it goes back into the river. So Mato, uh, where Tatoe, we don't have any problems with that, according to this bill? Oh, you'll get it for free. <laughs> okay, I, in order to argue, I want to, yep. so okay. that it goes on record that I mention it. All right, so based on what I've been hearing today, you do not have the information of the allocation of a, a home, the allocation for agriculture. I mean, that's a whole different section of agriculture. You also do not have the allocation based on how many rooms in the hotel. Because I know for sure that one hotel uses 150,000 liters of water a day. And if I put all the hotels together, just working it out like that, that's a million and a half to two million liters of water per day goes to these hotels. And there's no mention of them in here. The mention is for us. For the four of us, we'd be lucky if we, if we use 200 liters a day. And yet, we are the one that's talking about the bill. The people who spends, who uses two million litres of water a day is not really, or are they here? What, what I'm trying to say is, 
If this bill covers that, it gives government extra power to charge where it should be charged like the, the landowners mentioned before, that our people should not charge, that should not be charged, and anybody who makes money on our land and water should be charged. If this is what this bill is all about, then uh, I mean, so you will need to first, I'm just getting, you know, what's been happening tonight. What you're saying is for us to, okay, for TTV to take over this, then you are able to sort out the allocation. Is that what I'm saying? What, what, you, what this whole thing tonight I is? I think the best way to word it is this. What, what I'm hoping tonight is people will say, okay, we won't reject paying something for water, especially for wasting it, as long as it's affordable, as long as the tariffs are fair and they're determined by an independent body, not TTV, and as long as the proper allocation is made between commercial, agricultural and domestic. We can't give you that assurance tonight because it's going to take at least a year to even work out what those, what those charges should be. But I can say that there was a consultant by the name of Ian Hayes mm. who worked a, on a, an initial methodology, yeah. produced quite a good, big report from Tariffs, and his report uh, gave a pretty good indication that uh, domestic consumers can receive a comfortable amount of water and farmers by striking a proper commercial rate. So initial indications are positive. So the, it depends whether now we are not aware of any. That's right. Until we know what the usage of water is, it is more with the meter, like the data to it is water. Yeah, that's the way I report on that. The one that turn, yeah, the way to the way the tanga ngi 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 the one that turn turn, but I got to hear the data once already. And we need to have that data for a period of a, a year to two years how much water we're actually talking about. Then we can set the tariff the katan. the katan on the We're looking at ways and means to enable growers to use their water more efficiently uh, without having to pay for it. So these are the things that the metering will tell us and tell us what to do. Okay, Mitaki, I have one more request. Two questions, one request. It talks about another act. What's that act? Investment act or something or... Oh, yeah. uh, it mentions that act over here. Please refer to that act. What is yeah. that act? Uh, the Cook Islands Investment Corporation Act okay. yeah, is the parent of the Te Aponga Ports Authority, Airport Authority, All right. Bank Cook Islands, and now Te Tatopai. Uh, no, no, there's an there's a act that states, it's, I forgot what page. But what I'm asking is, for the meeting tomorrow and the meeting after, because you've, you've, you've circulated this act for us to look at, You've also circulated the explanation in note, but you did not circulate the information about that act that we have to refer to. Oh, it, it's, um, it can be found on the parliamentary website, and it's really all it is is saying that that board, which has um, Malcolm Sword, um, Mike Henry, and Karen, somebody on it, they appoint the boards, all the other boards. Okay. And that act's been in place since 1998. Can you please include that section you're talking about? Because I keep thinking, all right, this is for that information, I have to go to that act, but I don't have it here. And I'm sure nobody could have got it here. So when we have a, a meeting, at least have that act displaying on your, 
on your display yeah, or have copies of it available. Exactly the same we got ours available. Some of us got on the website, but it's not. All I got sent was this one and the explanatory. The Yeah, okay, please. Uh, Finally, number nine, section nine, one, close one. You said before that the authority is not a person, and yet the Act says the authority has the powers of a natural person. Can you please explain what that means? The authority is not an individual. It, 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 but it is a, a person at law. So I, I apologise if I wasn't clear. A company and a statutory corporation and an, and an incorporated society are treated at law as a separate person. But what I said before is that a company can't be negligent. Only a human being can be negligent. Uh, OK. Yeah. So we can, like uh, Papa Hosking was saying, if they break the pipe and damage my building, I can hold a, the worker liable, or his boss, or the board, but not the TTEB? Is that what that means? No, because uh, a section, um, there's one section which provides that uh, TTV isn't liable as a company, because you can sue a person at law. There's another section that says that the director's officers and employees are not liable as long as they act in good faith. Good faith means they tried to do the right thing, they weren't reckless, um, but they're liable if they were reckless and if they were malicious. But it says even if it was negligence, which is exactly opposite to what you say. But that's in the section concerning the company, isn't it? No, so if they come and break something on your property, they yeah, didn't install it, right? Yeah. And the but water came and uh, destroyed my cabbage plantation, I can't sue you. No, you can't, you can't sue the company. Six, section 44 this is a a director of the board, the CEO, and the officers and the employees are not personally liable for anything done in good faith. So it doesn't exempt. Negligence appears in the section concerning the company. Good faith appears in the section concerning the human beings. Yeah. Uh, anyway, are, uh, we need to... Uh, uh, but, but you're correct. I mean, some people think that governments and public servants should be liable for negligence. You know, but most governments try and limit their liability through statute. So I don't know whether it's any comfort. The government is not doing anything different from what governments do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. We have, uh, yeah, Maria. Um, just maybe two questions. Um, it was mentioned before there is an independent body to, um, to review the tariffs. Can you tell me who that independent body is? Uh, Brian Mason, Chair to Tatawai. The independent body is the Competition and Regulatory Authority which was established by statute last year, and it already has uh, functions in regard to uh, Vodafone. And a lot of people might not realise that if you look at that act and, and you're upset with Vodafone, there's all sorts of things you can do now to make their life difficult. And that will extend to, to Tato Vai and to Te Ponga, uh, uh, with before tariffs are introduced. Okay. Thank yeah, you. The, uh, the regulator has been appointed. He's on the island, and his first task is to deal with uh, pricing for the telecommunications costs. His second job will be to look at pricing for Tiaponga, the power that they charge, whether that pricing is fair and reasonable. And his third job then will be to look at 
any pricing set by Tutato Vai, whether their pricing is fair and reasonable. But any member of the public can lodge a complaint or anything to the regulator if they feel pricing is not fair. And the regulator is independent uh, and they act solely on their own, uh, but they have authority to impose what they think should be a fair price. Okay, um, I guess mentioned before about Te Aponga and the Vodafone that yes, it's owned by government, but now we're talking about the Matavai, that Rota is not owned by government, but we're getting big, the same independent body to have a look at the water. Mm. The, um, the, the, any pricing for uh, Te Vai is not for water. It's for the infrastructure. Yeah, it, the data by delivers water to your home, and if you if you want to use it, then you pay for it. If you use above the free allocation provided by ordered by the government, uh, or you don't use it, and and you take your water off the roof and you don't pay anything. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, one last question. We talked about the board of directors and mentioned before by the chairman around you have to be qualified. So there's, there's got to be some kind of qualification for you to be on these board of directors. And we can see that Cook Island Investment Corporation is the one who has some oh, authority, I guess, on these different types of board of directors for the airport, for the ports authority, and then now the water. My question here is because you said this only applies to people who is qualified. My question is, I've seen that there have been some landowners in, in these board of directors. Whether because they have the qualification, I don't know. What I want to see here is that I want landowners. So I'm saying in this bill that I want landowners to be represented on these board of directors. What's to say if a board of director came and they're like full of papa ass? You know, just papa ass talking about my land, talking about the best of my land. Why can't I do that? I mean, I'll be qualified. I mean, we'll educate our children to enter in those positions, but give me also the authority as a landowner to get on these direct, um, board of directors so I can say something. I mean, I can voice out for all the other landowners. So, yeah, that's my concern and my ask, not for, for going backwards, but to going forward with the board of directors. Thank you. I think there are only two boards we've got Papa eyes on, and one of them is right here. Um, all the rest are Cook Islanders, but in reference to landowners, if you see in the Bill 35 section, qualification, you don't have to be qualified but there are qualifications required. But one of them is a good understanding of relevant socioeconomic matters such as land tenure in the Cook Islands. It doesn't require qual qualification. It requires a good understanding of those. And this is where somebody who who's not a, has a legal background or doesn't have a finance or doesn't have a business background uh, fits into these boards. And we have numerous boards, airport, ports, uh, Te Aponga, Tutato Way, the new cable, overall cable for the internet, there's a new board on there. Uh, and off the top of my head, I can't remember, or CIIC, uh, another board. So there are, the idea is this to be on the board is to add value to the governance of these boards. Uh, but there is certainly room for people who have landowner understandings on all of these boards. They have a very similar framework. So if you are interested, um, as the uh, advertising went, put your name forward to CIIC to be in the pool of people considered for directorships uh, because people are retiring and we have to put new people on. People then go through a induction, a director's course to have a full understanding of what a job of a, of a board director is, what your liabilities are, what your responsibilities are, and so they will train you to, to be a good qualified uh, board member uh, and it's something that I encourage our people to do if you'd like to consider being on a board. Diana, yeah. Thank you. 
Um, can you just define what negligence means as opposed to not acting in good faith? Yeah, that's a, a tricky one because um, in, in Scotland, which has a different legal system, they recognise the difference between gross negligence and negligence. Um, ne negligence is essentially carelessness, just being careless. Good faith means that you are malicious, in other words, that you deliberately break somebody's water pipe working for Tatata Vai because you don't like that person or they annoyed you, or you do something to damage their, their pipe, or you're indifferent. So if you're, um, if you're working and you just simply don't care whether you um, harm somebody's water system or not, you're not acting in good faith. And we have that difference in, um, with driving. We have careless driving and we have dangerous or sometimes called reckless driving. Most people are careless at some stage because we don't all always drive perfectly. But much, many, much fewer people are reckless. It's reckless, for example, if you drive at 70 or 80 kilometres an hour through Titicabaka because you're, you're, you're completely indifferent to, the, to anyone coming out on the road. Sorry, you, can, sorry yeah. I know it's getting very late and I appreciate that, but can you just repeat what negligence means? Uh, negligence means, um, uh, uh, the closest thing, thing I can th think to negligence is being careless. You know, you, you're, um, you've made a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Because my biggest concern with section 63, part 8, is you mention in here, even if it has been negligent, for injury resulting from the consumption of water. The very reason why this system has been put in place is to deliver us with water that is potable. And so if somebody becomes sick from drinking water due to the water quality, then who is liable? Because I know that under the CIIC Act, a subsidiary of CIIC is not liable. In um, Havelock North, they drew from the artesian system for about 23 years and they never chlorinated and they thought it was fine. And then suddenly seven people died and hundreds of people got sick. Mm -hmm. Some people would say the public ought to be able to sue them for millions of dollars. Other people say, well, if you can do that, um, the government will go broke. Other people say, well, the government can get public liability insurance. It should have insurance. It, should, it shouldn't be allowed to be negligent. So you, you've raised a, a very valid but a very common debate. Could we then maybe specify the consumption of water provided by TTV rather than the consumption of any water? Because the oh, studies yeah. that you presented yourself is that the reason why we're getting this system is so that we can drink water that doesn't make us unwell. If we become unwell from this water, somebody needs to be blamed for it, especially when you mentioned before that water quality can only be tested once a month. I don't think people need to be blamed every time something goes wrong. I mean, that, we, we, we live in a world where if anything goes wrong, we want to blame somebody. But the reality is that even with the best intention in the world, this is a very complex system that we have on Rarotonga. We don't just have, like in Auckland, the Hanua dams and the White, White, Waitakere dam. We have a complex system, and uh, even with the best one in the world, there may be an error now. Yeah, excuse me, Brian. Yeah. Um, maybe I could ask Stuart, the Solicitor General, about this particular provision in the, uh, in the Act. Uh, is it standard, uh, the way that it's written here, for, for entities like uh, Totato Vote? Yeah. 
Uh, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak on this, and I've heard, obviously, a few of the comments that have been made. And, um, of course, we can look at this as well and assist going forward with the, the select committee on this particular point. Um, but my understanding is that if this is a, um, a standard wording as applied here, and therefore um, is, is not unusual in this sort of situation to have this sort of wording. But again, given the concerns that have been raised, we can assist on this point and, and review it as necessary. Thank okay, you. Brian. Yep, thank you. Thank you. No other questions for us tonight? Okay, well. Oh, yes, Ms. Kay. I don't have any questions. I've just got. Uh, I came in this meeting hearing all these coconut violence from outside um, about this bill. I've been involved with the Matawai right from the beginning as a landowner on Tupapa and as well on uh, Matawara. A lot of the questions have been asked before, and tonight is double up. I'm sitting here, and a lot of my questions have been asked and answered correctly, and I'm happy with that. So I'm walking out of this door very happy. We have the highest house in the country come down to our level. So I'd like to thank you all, Chairman. Very happy with the outcome. Um, I'm also a landowner in Takitumu, so I will be attending that meeting. It's still a bit niggles, um, but hey, that's why we all come here, to speak our mind and listen to all the answers, constructive questions asked and construction, constructive answers given. So I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you much, Ms. Kay. Thank you. 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 Simple as that. First one, the first question is, uh, if you become organized uh, and you become uh, uh, government enterprise, right? Uh, yeah, government enterprise, yes. Um, okay. Uh, my point is, uh, uh, I'll just tell a little story first before I come back to this. As a public enterprise, a government enterprise, you have the power of, uh, I hope it doesn't happen because uh, if the government becomes bankrupt, uh, like the 1995 um, thing, uh, so, public, uh, uh, government enterprises have the power to sell. Is that right? The assets, everything? No, not the not the physical assets of the water infrastructure. No. Okay. Well, during the 1995 uh, reform, I remember the Ports Authority was. Uh, was at a, a very bad level then. It was decided like uh, the, po the Port Authority was to sell. I know this because I was the uh, secretary for the board at that time. And um, one of the buyers of the, of the ports was uh, Sofran Alliance. Uh, uh, they backed away because uh, the, the course was in a bad state. It needs repair, upgrading, and all that. And the restrictions for shipping, there are only two ships that are required to supply the Cook Islands at the time. So he wasn't satisfied. They weren't satisfied with that. 
They wanted more. So I'm, what I'm, the point I'm getting at is, if it does become run by a public enterprise, private, the danger you will see there is uh, there will be an increase in uh, tariffs, charges of the sort. So what I'm saying is like if the way becomes something that's very similar, that's passed on to private enterprise, the prices of rates we can't control. But that's my point that I'm getting at. I hope it doesn't happen. Well, lucky it is after, it's not during the COVID time that the, the, the other way was established. <laughs> but anyway, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karikarik. Uh, yes, to, to reinforce the Tao, we are, no, we cannot sell because, as we mentioned before, the ownership of that property, that land that those structures sit on, belongs to landowners. The government is only able to go up and maintain those structures by consent that we have sought and that we have obtained from the landowners. So there is no way that we would be able to sell any of that, uh, this entity, uh, without the consent of landowners. So the short answer there, no, they cannot. I'd like to thank everybody for coming along. Don't forget, the show will be on the road again tomorrow in Puegura, and then we'll repeat performance in Takitumu on Thursday night. If you haven't had enough tonight, come. Tomorrow we'll be there. We'll be presenting, uh, hopefully, with a, a bit more informed presentation from the outcomes that we've had tonight. Thank you very much uh, for those who did contribute. Thank you very much for all of you who stayed behind. Uh, I was going to make an announcement before we started. Uh, there was in the newspaper you would have seen an allegation that I made the statement that uh, landowners, I considered them extremists. The newspaper put this statement attributed to me. For those of you who read today's newspaper, you would have seen on the page five, I think page four, right in the bottom corner, the correction of the editor of the newspaper to say, no, Mark Brown did not say that. So, but it's too late. It went out on Saturday. We must make an offer to tell you what you know. Here, the two two are the minute are wa kakino yirato. The tataranga the editor of the newspaper. We got it. It's not yet done. We una yero the newspaper. So I'm just letting you know now in case somebody brings it up. Are na kudara two two. Na the editor umato odato yaya. He loves to incite people. He has no worries because he's not from here. He's going to leave and go back to his country and leave his mess over here. So I just thought we'd close with that. I'd like to thank our members and our officials. We have another big day tomorrow. Without any further ado, in closing, uh, 3 John verses 2 and 4, the Bible reads, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along. Verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. So may I leave you with the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we've come to the end of our discussion this evening. And it is our belief that your Holy Spirit has dwelt within us to direct us, to give us unity, and for the peace of mind in all our discussions. But be with us tomorrow and the following night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.